Hey there! Welcome to Sailing Calypso. This is the fifth episode that I have done since taking over editing duties from Andrew. On the 9th of January, Andrew, our daughter Laura and I took a huge step towards leaving. We rented out our house and moved onto the boat. We spent just over a month living on board, finishing lots of jobs and doing trolley loads of provisioning. Just to clarify, he has got sails, just no engine and we met up with him in St. Helena. One is never really ready to leave and any small problem can scupper one's plans. Bearing this in mind, we set a date and stuck to it. On the 23rd of February, after a frenetic day trying to get British pounds, the lady did not understand how we could be leaving on a boat Checking out the country and downloading charts, we were finally ready to go. We waved goodbye to our sun mat and set our course heading northwest. We got into a routine fairly quickly. Andrew and I did three hour watches, three hours on, three hours off, and in my time off I cooked food, baked bread, did the washing and slept. While on watch we looked out for passing ships and foraging birds. Our buddy boat, Rev de Lune, had left just before us, and we weren't sure we were going to see them again. However, after four days at sea, we heard them on the radio and eventually saw them on the horizon. That same day, we had a swim in the beautiful deep blue water. The brand new batteries were not holding charge. We had to switch off the fridge at night and run the engine two to three times a day to keep the voltage up. It was most frustrating, but there was nothing else we could do. Thirteen days after setting sail, we spotted land, St. Helena at last. We were still doing COVID testing when we got there and we had to wait two days before they came to test us. Then we had to wait another day to get the results and only after negative results were received were we allowed ashore. Those first steps on land felt like the earth was moving. It was a very strange feeling. The dinghy dock 
was hair raising. The little boat that brought us to the dock goes alongside and you have to grab hold of the rope and time your leap with a swell as you launch your body ashore. There were a couple of near misses. Wi-Fi is practically non-existent and very expensive on St. Helena. Anne's place was the best place to buy Wi-Fi and check in with family back home. We did a tour of the island seeing all the tourist attractions. There were no fresh veggies to be found in the town, yet the governor has the biggest veggie patch ever seen. After a few days, it was time to move on. 